Okay, I'm here with uh, Neely Cruz. Welcome, Neely, to Australia. Neely is the Vice President of the European Commission, responsible for the whole digital transformation agenda in Europe. She's a passionate advocate of internet freedom, of broadband and competition. But before we move on to that, Neely, you and I have a special thing in common, because both of us in years past have been water ministers, you in the Netherlands and me in Australia. But of course the difference is, in Australia the water minister's worried about no water, whereas in the Netherlands I guess the problem is too much. Absolutely, and um, that is rightly said, that uh, fascinating portfolios, by the way, and I prefer to uh, have more water, for then you can just construct uh, huge uh, instruments to, to tackle that, and if there is not enough water, you don't have a line um, with uh, the rain, I imagine. Yeah, well, our, yes, our, our problem, we don't have to worry about, um, about uh, you know, living below sea level in the way the Dutch do. But let's move on to telecommunications. A uh, big debate uh, about the future of the internet governance with the US Department of Commerce proposing to um, withdraw from its role in the um, you know, allocation of names and numbers, the IANA function. Um, the European Commission, Australia, like-minded countries have all said we want the internet to continue to be governed by the multi-stakeholder community, the mostly technical community that have, that have built it and managed it to date. Uh, are you confident that the internet can remain free of government control? Um, a little bit of involvement is not a bad thing in this, for it is so important that the governance of internet is correctly done and that it is transparent and that it is consistent and that it is understandable and that those bodies who are responsible for that are dealing with our values of a democracy and that there is not a monopoly from one or a couple. So you would like to see ICANN, for example, be more transparent? More transparent and <clears throat> more uh, consistent in a couple of uh, strategies and um, the, the new leader of ICANN is uh, doing a great job. Uh, he has to speed up, in my opinion, but he's doing a great job. And there shouldn't be a monopoly of one country. And with all respect for the founders of uh, the institution, uh, the world has been changed. And it is absolutely main that uh, the naming and the numbering is in a transparent and consistent uh, hand. Mm, thank you. We've talked about, in our discussion just a moment ago, about uh, the digital economy. In fact, we, I think we both agree that we shouldn't use the word digital, the phrase digital economy because the economy is digital. How revolutionary has been the whole digital transformation, which you have provided such great leadership in, in Europe? Um, it's fascinating what is, uh, what's happening. And just two examples in which I try to prove um, that it's not like it was yesterday. My youngest advisor is 11 year old. She's a Belgian girl and she is marvelous. She is advising me how to code and that all the European girls and boys should follow that uh, type of course, that it's not only reading and um, writing, but it's also coding. My eldest uh, advisor is 94 year old. She is a remarkable lady living in uh, Rome. She is a writer, she's writing blogs, excellent. And she is a part of a research innovative project in which robotics are just uh, pushed and uh, developed. It is a huge uh, and important part of our Horizon 2020. And we are spending quite a bit of money to also the robotic part. And some people are thinking, Malcolm, that robots are taking a job from someone. For some jobs, that's true. But for other jobs, it's creating a lot of new jobs. And what is at stake? That lady of 94 is just explaining to me what has to be done to give more opportunities for robots, also for elderly people, mm. where they can stay longer independently. And that is great. By the way, 
just being involved in research and innovation in the digitization and in the technology development, it is fascinating. We are facing just the start of a huge development of our world. Mm, no doubt. And you know, the, obviously the ties between Australia and the European Union and its member states are so so strong, so excellent. Uh, but just on a one specific issue, uh, the in terms of the evolution of our strategy for completing our national broadband network, we've had such terrific assistance from broadband deployment telcos uh, in Europe, uh, in the United Kingdom, in Spain, in France, in Germany, in Belgium, uh, right across Europe. And we've uh, the the level of there's a growing level of collaboration on technology between European countries, the European Union, of course, and uh, Australia. So we. I'm really glad that you're here, and I, I know that uh, your visit will strengthen those ties. Malcolm, you are doing an extremely good and important job for your country. Go on, and don't only ask the big ones for advice, but also ask those innovative startups where mm. it is fascinating what is going on, especially talking about area where you and I are responsible for. No doubt. Thank you so much, Neely. With pleasure.